So I went to the council meeting, talked a lot of crap about uh, Chief Kelly, you know, fire department, fire marshal, fire station, that kind of thing. Not really the fire empo employees, just their leadership, right? Well, Chief Kelly decided in his old wise ways, or maybe Blanchard or, Kelly, or, or Gary forced him to do this because he's not a very competent man, but he came out and said that I basically lied, gave misconceptions and half-truths, which is slander, which is what the city does to me all the time. I basically brought out in that council meeting that Chief Kelly should live within the city limits. As per policy manual, right? He should live there. That way he can better understand the community, help out the community, better response times. Well, he rebuttaled that the policy manual doesn't, that the policy manual does not actually require Fire Chief Kelly to live here. Well, no one said that, buddy. If you read the policy manual, it does say encourages. That means people like you should live there to help out the community, not live in Portland, where it could take you 30 minutes to an hour to respond to something. Now, you went on, Chief Kelly, and you said that the second thing I would like to cover is NFPA 710. This guideline is not state law, and I'm not required to adhere to it. Well, hmm, I brought that up because of the response times, and our response times for the city are piss poor, and I'm going to show you in a little while, right? But let's go on to the 1710 that he says not required. You know what this is, Chief Kelly? I bet you don't, because you don't even know your tail from your ass, boy. City of Rance passed proposed annual budget. Look what it says right here, guys. This is for the fire department. Upgrade equipment and softwares to better perform risk analysis and meet NFPA 710 professional standards. What happened there, Kelly? What's wrong there, buddy? Loss of speech? Yeah, you're a moron. All right, Chief Kelly. <laughs> so uh, I showed you the 1710. That was your goals, and you included in the budget to utilize that. And to adhere to that, and now you're telling me you don't adhere to that, I find that uh, an oxymoron, sir. Maybe you should uh, get your ducks in a row before challenging somebody more sophisticated than you are. With that said, <clears throat> you go on to vent about 1710, blah, blah, blah. Well, you should be doing it. It's even in your budget, okay? Let's skip on from this. You want to talk about So, the citizen, you're talking about me, spoke of long response times for the fire department and gave vague examples, which no description, description was uh, there. Well, buddy, I only get three minutes to talk. Unlike Poundcake, who gets to talk for 17 minutes about defaming old mayors as complete bullcrap, but I don't have enough time to tell you about every single thing y'all do wrong. Forgive me for only having three minutes, dear sir. Now, if you'd like to talk about those response times, I can show you some, right? But hold on, I want to talk about more of the NFPA. So NFPA 17 would not apply to this call since it was not within your response dis district and in a different city. Where does it state NFPA doesn't apply here, Kelly? Would you please list your source? Or did you lie? Well, you lied, and I'll show you in a little while. We'll go down to NFP NFPA 1710 because you attached to this, and it doesn't say anything about what you're talking about. Now, you brought up the, uh, 30, well, the 1034 South Whitney that I brought up in the council meeting. So you brought this back up to me that your guys did a good good job and they got there on time. Well, I'm going to show you again how you all falsify documents and make stuff up to adhere to what you're saying, right? Here we go, buddy. Here's your document you were talking about. This is 1034 South Whitney Street, right? This is the event you were talking about and I talked about. Let's scroll down. <clears throat> <clears throat> See, here's, here's, my, here's my concern. If the alarm went off at 1714. You didn't get back till 1730, and you made some excuse for that. But here's where we have trust issues in the city. You were dispatched at 1730.08. Your guys are en route 1730.08. How is that possible, sir? Please educate the community on how you can get stuff done in less than half a second. We would like to know. Well, we already know, because I showed you this last year when you falsify and lie on documents. You're full of crap. All right. Okay, so Mr. Kelly goes on. He says, thirdly, <clears throat> I would like to discuss cancer in the fire station and how Mr. Followell doesn't understand this. And he, I preached it to the council and I misunderstood everything and I'm an idiot is basically what he's saying. Uh, he goes on to say that uh, cancer is caused in the fire stations, right? But then he elaborates to what I've already hinted to numerous times on Facebook is that a complete cancer study has never been done for the Aransas Pass Fire Department. Well, Kelly, how do you know it's causing cancer? Why do we need a $16 million fire station and you can't even tell me that it's causing cancer? You are pound cake. Now, 
no citations listed here, right? He gave a brief little journal, and I'll show you about it in a little while. One example he gave, I mean, he's got all this time. He could have gave us lots of examples and all, a lot of data to compare to what he's talking about, right? And he did not do that, but I'm still going to tear apart his journal that he sent you to. So, firefighters received these carcinogenics from diesel particles from the trucks, off-gassing of bunker gear and particles, and resuspended, resuspension from contaminated post-contaminated uh, post-fire gear. Okay. Let's pause here for a second. So I brought up decontamination. That's what I, that's what one of my brother rebuttal was to Chief Blanchard. And I talked about PPE. Those are two things. And I fully agree with that. So I don't know why Chief Kelly's throwing this in here like I didn't know what I was talking about because I did. Now his diesel trucks I have an issue with, right? <clears throat> uh, he's saying we're getting exposed cans, carcinogenics from diesel. Well, I mean, you can. They've changed the data on that. And there is carcinogenics found in diesel. However, where are they getting them from? And I'm assuming he's talking about the exhaust from the trucks and vehicles. Now, uh, and I'll explain that later when I go through his program at the bottom. So we'll catch up on that in a minute. I'm sorry, guys. I'll show you that later on. <clears throat> so uh, the new station design helps eliminate these carcinogenics by uh, establishing a hot zone area. Well, great, Kelly. How about you tell us what our hot zones areas are in our own fire station by doing an industrial hygiene uh, sampling of atmospheric data, such as your diesel, like you're talking about, or carcinogenics that are from PPE or not decanning pro de decontamination properly or washing your material, like your clothing for your fire department. Uh, let us know that first before we jump onto a $16 million fire station, right? <clears throat> Oh, and I, I'd love to jump to his article right now. I got a little note right here to talk about it. So I'll give you a little heads up because we're going to go to it in a minute. But his article was for fire stations built in 1974, several of them from uh, before 1974, and only one of them from 2007. Ironically, the one in 2007 had more carcinogenics than the older ones. So a little laugh out loud to Mr. Kelly, right? But I'll show you in a minute. Okay. And the article does talk about decon and as a main issue. <laughs> That's exactly what I talked about. It's exactly what I told Pound Cake in the meeting. So I don't know why Chief Kelly's trying to throw this in here like it's not something I talked about. It is. That is the number one cause. Decontamination and PPE. Meaning you're not knowing how to decon decontaminate or you're not doing it properly. You don't have the right material, wash machines to do it properly. Or you don't know how to use your PPE or your PPE is in bad condition, poor condition because you're not maintaining it. Right? This diesel thing is mute point, guys. Mute point. All right. But I'll show, again, I'm going to show you all later. <clears throat> I love this, though. His famous slogan. We continue to protect the community with integrity, honor, strength, and unity. This is quite laughable as you are a scumbag piece of shit and you lie a lot. And I'm going to show everybody again exactly how you are. Okay. <clears throat> so this was the policy that Chief Kelly was talking about. Right? And I'm going to let you all read it. Okay, the fire department administration encourages the members of the department to reside within the city. Residing within the city of Arantz Pass allows the members of the fire department to bond with other residents. It shows support for the city, Kelly, who lives in Portland, no support, and personnel are quicker to respond to large incidents and disasters. Amen. Amen. And Kelly, you're not that. You live in Portland, buddy. You don't care about us. Now, here is the NFPA standard 1710. Nothing in here talks about uh, if you get a call to another town, this doesn't apply. It's not applicable. It's not in here. And here's the standards, right? We're looking at them. This is exactly what I said in the meeting. Now, if you go back to that document in the budget from uh, 2017 where they approved this and they were supposed to push towards this, what happened, Kelly? You might not have been here at that time, but that still was approved. Where did that money go? Did you blow our money? How come we're not uh, <clears throat> NFPA standard 1710? Why don't we use it? It was in our budget. We spent money on it. What happened? All right. So I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff. You're welcome to read it yourself. <clears throat> this is the <clears throat> document that he sent as proof that they need a new fire station because the fire department, <laughs> the firefighters are going to get cancer. All right. <clears throat> uh, our, our fire stations contributing to uh, cancer risk. Now, I'm going to scroll through. I'm not going to beat the whole thing up. I just want to show you this was from 2015. Uh, it was 718 firefighters that were in this, right? <clears throat> Here's your air, air sampling. Uh, <clears throat> the study, which involved air sampling interviews, took place in the spring of 2016. Uh, they collected data from three, three stations 
that were between 1948 and 1974 and only one station, the newer one from 2007, right? <clears throat> and this was a scientific journal. I give them kudos for using that. Cool. <clears throat> uh, this is about the particles, right? And this is about your BOCs, your diesel, carcinogenics, that kind of thing, right? Now, what was interesting here is that, well, this is just an oxymoron. So the uh, particles inside the building were higher than the ones outside the building, right? It's oxy I mean, that's just ridiculous. We know that. Uh, many of the peaks and particle levels in the apparatus bay corresponded with approximate call times. Okay. What does that mean? They're getting in their trucks. They're turning them on. We get some fumes, right? I can understand that. I can understand that. All stations had uh, similar ventilation systems, flexible ducts that attach directly to the apparatus and transmit exhaust out of the bay, pumps it out. We get that. And what they're saying here is that firefighters can be exposed to diesel while they're doing that, right? What can we do here besides buying a new fire station? Well, we can put guys in PPE before they do that, right? Well, there's no hazard. We can open up all the doors, right? Where there is ventilation coming through, which will greatly reduce the hazard, right? <clears throat> okay, save the- uh, What I found interesting about this, guys, is that the new station, the one from 2007, had three times the particulates in the older models. Three times higher. So the newer station had more particulates. Now, it did have lower particulates in the kitchen, <laughs> but higher particulates in the bay. Now, it does go into equipment washing, decon, that kind of thing, which is what I talked about, which needs to be done. This is how you reduce your carcinogenics from affecting our employees or our fire department, right? Okay, the study demonstrated that concentration of particulates were higher in the apparatus bay when compared to outside. That's a no brainer, right? Additionally, station four, the new one, had the highest level of particulates in the apparatus bay, yet by far the lowest in the kitchen. So I had a better kitchen, good deal. What are your particulates in the kitchen? Well, it depends on what they have for chemicals in there, guys, and we can mitigate that too. Doesn't need a new fire station to mitigate that. Quit being a moron, Kelly. <laughs> this is the ladder track call, this ladder truck call out log, guys. And I wanted to show you this because I bitch that's a waste of money. We don't need a ladder truck. And man, there might be some times when we do need one. That's great. But they still shouldn't be using a ladder truck for every single call. That's a lot of money, right? You got at least four firefighters on this. Uh, you got fuel cost. It's also a huge hazard. Right, it's a. It can hurt pedestrians. It can hurt uh, other vehicles or damage other vehicles. But anytime that ladder truck gets damaged, it's got to be reinspected. So we're looking at months without the ladder cage if they do get it damaged, which is why I don't understand why they use the cut palm trees. Right? If you get any kind of damage to that ladder, it's screwed. It's out of service. Done. Till it get reinspected. These things only get normally reinspected once a year, which we're gonna talk about that too. So what I wanted to show you on this, guys, and this just tickles my little feather. Read right here. We sent a ladder truck for smoke from a barbecue. Wait, we sent a ladder truck for smoke. Oh, we sent a, sent a ladder truck for smoke from a barbecue. I'm not done. There's no smoke from a barbecue. Now you can go through all this if anybody wants them, you can go through them, but they don't need a ladder truck for 90% of these. All right, these calls can be done with a bumper truck or with a first responder truck. You don't need a, to waste our money for something like this, guys, it's ridiculous. Anyway. If anybody wants it, just uh, send me an IM and give me your email and I'll send it to you. Mess with Chief Get a little bit more. This was a scientific journal too, right? And uh, it talks about the general cancer risk of firefighters was similar to the general population, but it has decreased over time. Man, why did it decrease over time? Well, that has to do with training guys. It has to do with proper PPE. Like I talked about, nothing about diesel trucks. <laughs> Sorry, that just makes me laugh. Oh, man. Okay. Anyway, uh, again, this is another one and it's talking about training and it's talking about PPE and that's how you lower it, right? You got to teach the people how to do it. He would like to clarify my thoughts on the fire the last night. I lived next door to the two homes that burned and I was very blessed to still have a home today. All the firefighters deserve a ton of praise and including everyone at the fire department. We do seem to have an issue with water supply for fire suppression. <laughs> How can we have an issue if we pass our uh, inspections all the time, Mr. Kelly? Well, because you lie. <laughs> the only fire hydrant originally working was the Red Top 500 GPM, <clears throat> approximately 250 to 300 yards away. 
why do we have a fire hydrant that we know are insufficient like this in service? Well, because Chief Kelly doesn't do his job. <clears throat> and he talks about Richard Walker's house burning down about two years ago because none of the fire hydrants were operable. This was true too. <laughs> the second fire hydrant, only 100 feet away, was inoperable for the first hour and a half. A non-firefighter came out there to open that up for the guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it how Chief Kelly just blows smoke up y'all's butt. Oh, this is Mr. Knight. Something is wrong with this picture. While Ingleside, Rockport, Portland has ladder trucks fighting the horrible fire in Pelican Cove tonight, our $1.4 million ladder truck was parked in front of the Aransas Pass Station. Why? Well, let's see. What does Jason say? I had to wait for a bit to talk about this due to being severely pissed off, and I also talked to a resident on on the same street who told me that the fire hydrants were not working because it was true. Guess what wasn't put in the newspaper? None of that. Oh, by the way, I asked for this fire report and they tried charging me $7,000 for it, guys. Why? Because they don't want you to have the data. Guys, before I take off, I did a lot of investigating, man. I've been doing a lot of investigating. I asked all kinds of questions on ladder truck and pumper trucks and asked per policy. They're supposed to be inspecting these every day, right? Well, guess who's not doing his job? Chief Kelly. What do they have to say about it? There's no responsive information, meaning they're not inspecting the ladder truck. They're also not inspecting the, uh, they're not doing any training on the ladder truck. So the guy's supposed to be trained on these. He always preaches about training. They're not even training on them. Oh my God. Uh, this is the inventory checklist for the pumper truck and ladder truck. Uh, there's no documented people fight. So who's doing the inventory on these if they're not doing them? What's going on? What are we paying these guys for? They're not doing what they're supposed to do. If you read the AP, uh, fire department's policy manual. He's supposed to be doing this stuff and he's not doing it. This guy's a joke. He's fake and he lies to you. Okay, guys, as you can see, wasn't lying. Didn't misunderstand. I knew exactly what I was talking about. Chief Kelly, on the other hand, the moron. Nah, he didn't. And I just called him on his BS once again, because that's what I do. These guys will lie to you, continue to lie to you, blow smoke up your butt and will not give you the evidence backing it up. Like if these guys want a new fire station and they're trying to convince you that it's because carcinogenics, then get us an industrial hygienist to come out there, do some air monitoring, some sampling, turn the ventilation on, see what we got going on, test it, give us the data back, and show the public. Don't just try to blow smoke up your butt because you're going to have a big dog like me come up there and pop you around the top of the head and say, dumbass, get the hell out of here. Anyway, I love you guys as always. Don't believe these pieces of shit. If anybody wants any of this evidence that I got, anybody wants it emailed to you, I do not mind. I will gladly send it to you. And I will